we're going to talk about polynomial graphs. All polynomial graphs have certain features that are in common. The first thing is that the domain will always be all real numbers. So that means that, that it will continue going all the way left and all the way right forever and ever. There will never be any asymptotes, vertical or horizontal. And the end behavior, when we talk about it, will always use infinity. Um, what we're going to be talking about a lot in this unit is um, talking about the degree of a polynomial. So you can determine the least degree of a polynomial, which is the smallest possible exponents. Um, by the number of zeros that it has. Zeros is another word for roots or solutions of the polynomial. And the way you can see that from looking at the graph is by looking at where it crosses through the x-axis. So all of these numbers here, like at negative 3, negative 2, positive 1, positive 3, positive 4, all of these places where I just put a uh, yellow dot, those are all zeros or solutions or roots of this polynomial. So um, I want to put down here that a zero is any x-intercept. So anywhere that the graph crosses or touches the x-axis. So in this problem, in this particular graph, um, negative 3, negative 2, positive 1, oops, not 2, positive 3 and positive 4, are all zeros. Okay, the next thing we need to talk about, um, we're going to go and we're going to look at relative minimum. So um, relative minimum just means anywhere where the graph kind of bottoms out. There's also going to be a thing called the absolute minimum, which is the absolute lowest point that the graph ever gets to. So what I like to do is just kind of go through and I look at um, points where the graph kind of takes a dip. So I can see right here, looks like it takes a dip. Um, right here on top of this yellow dot that I had drawn, and then right here. So all of these um, are minimums. The two that are not, there's one that's the lowest. That's our absolute minimum. And then there are two, the ones right here, they're low. They're lower than everything else around them, but they're not the absolute minimum. They're not all the way down to the bottom. So those would be considered our relative minimums. So when we're talking about a relative minimum, it's not talking about the one that's the lowest. It's just talking about ones that are relatively low. So I'm going to put they are relative, relatively minimum to, compared to the rest of the graph. Okay, so the next thing is relative maximum. So same thing. You're looking for like peaks or hills. So that would be over here and right here. So the places where I, I drew the green, um, those are both uh, relative maximums. Now, the reason it's not an absolute maximum is because if you look over here, our graph goes up in both directions forever and ever. So our absolute maximum would be infinity. Um, the two that I just put green dots on, those would be considered relative minimums. So let me write that on here. Or sorry, relative maximums. I said the wrong word. So these are relative maximums, and like I said, the purple stars would be relative minimums. And then the um, purple one, which I'm actually going to change, I'm going to use red. This would be our absolute minimum, because that is the absolute lowest point on this graph. Okay, so for the relative maximums, those are relatively maximum. Um, another word that you might hear is local maximum, local minimum. Um, and then the absolute maximum, absolute minimum, I'm sorry, is the lowest ever on the graph. So this graph, like I said, has no absolute max because it would just go up forever and ever and ever. All right, now this double zero thing, the very last topic here, this is what happens, um, and I'm going to put a blue star. So the point where it bottoms out and it bounces off the x-axis, so it can happen like it does here where it goes down and then back up. It could also be under the x-axis where it goes up and bounces back down off of it. 
but wherever your graph just touches the x-axis, that's called a double zero. Oops. Bounces is what I meant to write. So it bounces on the x-axis. Um, so in, in this particular problem, it's x equals 1. And what that means is that that particular answer actually happens twice. Um, so if we were looking at the solutions algebraically, you would see that that answer occurs two times. All right, so now we're going to take a look at a new graph, and we're going to identify a whole bunch of stuff uh, based on this graph. So the first thing we're going to look at are the zeros. So remember that that is where the graph crosses through the x-axis. So I see a zero here at negative two. This one looks like it crosses through halfway between zero and negative one. So that would be, um, we'll say negative 0 0.5, or you could write negative one half. It also crosses through at one, and then finally at three. So there are four zeros in this graph. So that means that the least degree is four. So however many times you can see the graph cross through or bounce off of the x-axis, that is your absolute least degree. All right, now the minimums, we're, what I'm looking for here are ordered pairs. So the minimums would be here and here. And notice it's not asking us for um, relative and absolute maximums and minimums. We're just looking for where does it hit a low point and where does it hit a high point. All right, so for the first purple point here, so that's this one right here, it, you can't tell exactly what it is, but I think it looks like it's about um, negative 1.5 to the left, and then it's down negative 2. And then the other one, which is this one right here that's on the right side of the y-axis, that one looks like it's, it's not quite at 2.5, so we'll say 2.25, we'll go by quarters, and then it's down Four, so negative four. So those two are my the points of my two minimums. Now for my maximum, I only have one point. I only have one place where there's a hill that it gets kind of to a, a high point. Um, we talked about how the graph, the previous graph, didn't have an absolute maximum. This is the same thing, and it's because the graph continues to go up as you get over to the sides. So your your absolute maximum would be infinity, but we can't really pinpoint that on the graph. So here is right here where I'm putting this blue dot. That's my, my maximum, my relative maximum. So it's not quite a half. So I'm going to say it's a quarter to the right. And then it's not quite one and a half. So we'll say 1.25 up. Now the domain we talked about is always going to be all real numbers for every single polynomial graph. So that one we don't even really have to think about too much. So I'm just going to write all real numbers because it goes left and right forever and ever. The range is a different story. Uh, the range is talking about all the possible y values. So what I want to do here, since it goes up forever, I want to identify what's the lowest point that it ever gets to. And it's this one right here. So the lowest y value here is negative 4. So my range has to be everything greater than negative 4. Um, and we're not going to put the equal to there. We're just going to leave it as greater, greater than. All right, now end behavior. We talked a little bit about how we're going to use infinities again. So uh, remember that when we do end behavior, we always have as x goes to infinity, as x goes to negative infinity, which means as x goes to the right, as x goes to the left. And now we have to talk about where the y value is going. So just a quick refresher, because it's been a while since we've talked about this. Um, I'm going to put my little roller coaster car here. And remember that we're not talking about what happens to the roller coaster car temporarily. We're talking about where does it go if you follow the graph all the way to the left or all the way to the right. So for my first one, as x goes to infinity, that means as x is going to the right, my roller coaster car would go eventually up to a positive infinity. So my y value is going to infinity. Um, as x goes to the left, it temporarily goes down, but then again continues up forever and ever towards positive infinity. Um, so both of my y values are going towards infinity. Now the increasing and decreasing intervals, what I'm talking about here um, is where if you were walking on this like it was a, a hill, if you were walking, would you, when would you be going up a hill and when would you be going down a hill? 
So uphill would be when you'd be on an increasing interval. And we're talking about which x values are you between. Um, so if you think about your maximum and your minimums. So I marked those with dots, um, purple, blue, purple. Those are my maxes and mins. If you mark those, so mark uh, your maxes and mins. And we're going to think about like you're slicing through vertically, slicing through those things. So what I'm going to do is mark some, I'm going to put like a slice here. So they almost look like asymptotes, but remember, we don't have asymptotes in polynomial graphs. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at in between these lines, these blue dotted lines that I just wrote. Are you, would you be going uphill or downhill? So let's look at the increasing first. So if I look over here, I'm going to mark it into sections. One, two, three, and four. If you look at section one, um, if I'm going from left to right like we read, if I was on the graph, I would be going downhill. So that is a decreasing interval. So we'll come back to that. Now if you look at section two, I would be starting right here and I would be going uphill until I got to this point. So that's an increasing interval. So again, we're only looking at x values. So this x value that's down here, that is about negative 1.5. And then it stops increasing when it gets to the top of this hill, which is at about 0 0.25. Okay, now section 3 is decreasing again. And then at section 4, we're increasing. So um, that one starts at about 2 and a quarter, so 2.25. And then it increases forever and ever. So we would say from 2.25 to infinity. Now for the decreasing intervals, since... 2 and 4 were done with because those were increasing. That means that the other two must be decreasing. So for, for interval 1, um, since it goes off forever and ever towards negative infinity, that's actually where we're starting our interval. And then we would stop it at negative 1.5. So you should be seeing these numbers, these boundary numbers that are on my dotted lines. Those should show up um, in, all of your, in all of your intervals. All right, and then the last one for section 3 it starts at 0 0.25 and then it stops at the last boundary line there which was at about 2.25 all right for our graph here we're first going to look at our zeros so i'm looking to see where the graph crosses through the x-axis so i'm putting yellow dots at all those points so I have zeros at negative 3, negative 2, positive 1, and positive 4. Now at positive 1, we have the kind of zero where it bounces off the x-axis. So what that means is that this is actually a double root. So what that means for our least degree is that it's actually 5. And the reason it's 5, even though I only wrote four numbers, is because 1 counts twice. So that's a double root. All right, so... Um, least degree is written on there twice. So we don't need that twice. All right, for the minimums, we're just looking for like a valley. We're not looking for an absolute. We're not looking for that. We're just looking for a valley. So it looks to me like here, here's where the graph kind of bottoms out, and here's another spot where the graph bottoms out. Um, if you notice, though, this graph does go down forever and ever towards the left. So there is no absolute minimum. We just have relative minimums, even though it didn't ask us to specify. All right, so the, the ordered pairs we're looking for here um, would be for the minimum. So the, I'm talking about the, the leftmost one first. Um, it looks like it's at about negative 1, negative 2. It's not exactly there, but it's close enough. And then uh, the second one is at about 3.2. And then it's down a little bit below negative 6, so we'll say negative 6.2. And those don't have to be exact, um, but it should be close enough that, you know, we can tell that you knew what you were looking for. Now the maximums, I have two of those as well. So I have one that's here and then another one that's here, which actually also happens to be the double root. I don't have an absolute min maximum, again, because this graph goes up forever and ever as you follow it to the right. So I have two 
local or relative maximums. The first one we're going to say is about negative 2.5, and it's up 1. And the second one is easy. That one is 1, 0. All right, domain is another easy one. It's always all real numbers. For the range, um, the, on the last one, we looked for where's the bottom most point. But since this graph goes up forever over here and it goes down forever over here, what that means is that our range is actually all real numbers. So that one won't always happen, but sometimes it will. The domain will always be all real numbers. The range will sometimes be all real numbers. All right, now for our end behavior, we're looking at as x goes to the right and as x goes to the left. So as x goes to the right, so if I was on my little roller coaster car here, if I follow this graph to the right, it goes down but temporarily, but then it goes up forever and ever. So that would be y going towards infinity. Now if I followed the graph to the left, I would go through a couple hills, but then eventually I would go down forever and ever. So that would be my y going towards negative infinity. All right, last thing, increasing intervals and decreasing intervals. So I'm going to do those dotted lines again, and I'm going to go through all of the maxes and mins. So I have one that's about here, one that's here, one here, and one that's all the way over here. So I have several sections here. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so they're going to alternate. Um, it's always going to either start with increasing and then go decreasing, increasing, de decreasing, or vice versa. So my, my first interval, if you look at number one, um, if I'm starting all the way to the left, it's actually increasing because I would follow this graph up until I got to this high point on the hill. So for my increasing intervals, My first one would start at negative infinity, and it would stop at the top of this point right here, which is at about negative 2.5. That's what we used um, up here. If you look over here, that's the same number we used. Okay, so that means that interval number two is decreasing. That means interval number three is increasing again. Interval number three, it starts at the x value um, of about negative one. That's what we used when we did our maximums and mins. And then it stops increasing at the top of the hill, which is at positive 1. Interval 4 then decreases, which means our last interval, number 5, increases. So uh, the number we used is 3.2 for our x value, and then it's going to increase forever and ever, so that would be up to infinity. Now for our decreasing intervals, since we used interval ones, intervals 1, 3, and 5, Intervals 2 and 4 are the only thing left for decreasing. So um, interval number uh, 2, I'm looking at x values, remember, starts decreasing at about 2.5, and it stops decreasing at negative 1. And then um, interval number 4 starts at 1 and then stops decreasing at about 3.2.